Standard 5th, Subject EVS 1 Chapter 9, Maps are Companions Dear students, the land in an environment is not of the same height everywhere. This unevenness gives rise to various land shapes creating different landforms such as mountains, valleys, plateaus, plains and islands. You have studied this in the third chapter. For a proper understanding of our environment, it is necessary to study the physical or natural setup of the land. In Standard 4, when we learnt about the maps, we saw a 5000 year old map. This means that man has felt the need to make maps since ancient times. At that time, maps were mainly used in wars. While fighting a battle, it is important to have detailed knowledge of the terrain. It helps in working out strategies of defeating the enemy. Maps were very useful for this purpose. Taking into account the differences in their height, shape, etc., various landforms can be drawn on a map. There are different methods of showing these landforms on a map. Let us look at these methods. The length and width of a landform can be easily shown on a piece of paper. However, the height and depth cannot be shown as easily. There are different methods of showing the elevation or height of the land. So you are going to study about three different methods. The first one, contour line method. This method is used to show the unevenness of landforms on a map. The height of the land is measured from sea level. Next, points of the same height are identified. Their position is marked accurately on the map. These locations are joined with a line. Such lines are called contour lines. Now see map A. In the map, lines are drawn. Each joining places of a specific height. This way, the relief of the land can be easily shown. It helps us to understand the slope of the land and the height of different places. Observe the given diagram. Note that when there is less distance between the contour lines, the slope is steep. Whereas if the distance is great, the slope is gentle. So you can see the diagram is marked steep slope and gentle slope. So this is how you can mark on a map using county line method. Next, layer tinting method. This method is based on contour lines. In this method, the spaces between contour lines are filled with color. Each color indicates a specific height. For example, Water bodies are colored blue, whereas the adjoining land is colored dark green. Land higher than that is colored a light green. Next higher land is colored yellow and so on. Study the given color index. Note how the colors change with the height. The colors between the contour lines show up the difference in the physical 
setup. You can see map B. In the map B, different colors according to the height of the land are expressed using different colors. Okay, and the same is shown in the index. So, index is very important. You can see a small box where height is in meters. Colors are shown in boxes representing the height of the landform. So, height is in meters and accordingly colors represent those height on the map. So, this way you can use layer tinting method while representing a particular region on a map. Third method Digital elevation model. This is the most modern method. In this, the information obtained through man made satellites is presented with the help of computers. See map C. In it, we can directly observe the differences in the height of landforms. Maps made using this method help us to understand the physical setup of a region. In other words, they give us an idea of its height, relief and slope. Using computers, we can even find the height of each point on a digital map. Okay, so advanced technology can help you for a better understanding. Physical maps can be used in military operations. Tourism, drawing up mountaineering routes, in making regional development plans, etc. So, you can see here a newspaper article shows how the Thane district is planning a 29 kilometer internal metro line and 22 stations to, be connect, to connect the city. So, this way a map is used. For various reasons, for tourism, for mountaineering, for regional development plans, etc. Alright? Do you know, nowadays, many modern methods of making maps have been developed. Previously, relief was shown using the hill shedding technique. The map given below is an example of this. Alright? Many people use maps. Many components are shown in maps or outline maps. If these components are shown on different maps in different ways, it will be difficult to understand them. Therefore, standard signs and symbols are used to make the map easy to read. These symbols and signs are universally used for specific components. That is why everyone can understand them. So, we are going to learn about the signs and symbols which are used while making a map or showing certain things on a map. So, let's learn about conventional signs and symbols. Signs are used to show various things on a map as per convention. These are in the form of letters or geometrical shapes. For example, lines, circles, triangles, dots, etc. These are called as conventional signs. What about conventional symbols? Symbols are used to show various things on a map as per convention. Symbols are miniature drawings of the respective objects. Miniature in sense, small. For example, temples, mosques, forts, etc are shown using conventional symbols. Alright? The use of signs and symbols in a map helps the reader to get exact information about the places on the map. A list of the things that the signs and symbols represent is given in the key to the map. So, when you go to some water park also, you must have seen you get a map in hand like Water Kingdom or SL World. Okay? And you come to know which ride is available in which particular area looking at the map. So, certain signs and symbols are used even in those maps. You can always refer to them for a better understanding. 
all right so now let's have a look at some signs and symbols study the list of some of the symbols used by the survey of india while making maps po stands for post office the symbol for harbor is shown similarly symbols are shown for lighthouse fort burial ground international boundary line is shown by a line a dot again the same line dot battlefield okay you can see the symbol for battlefield railway well spring triangulation mark settlement grass contour line lake road mine reserved forest okay so these are some signs and symbols which are used on a wide scale do you know the survey of india is the foremost map making institute in india it was established in 1767 this institute has made a large number of topographic maps of the indian subcontinent on various scales by conducting field surveys these maps are known the world over for their accuracy the institute's headquarters are in dehradun in uttarakhand so what we have learned today introduction to landforms methods of showing physiography the use of colors to show height the use of conventional signs and symbols so students kindly read the chapter for a better understanding keep safe learn well and thank you